Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mark Loeffler Experience. We've got a friend of the show here again, Josh Doyle. Welcome, Josh. I'm back. He's back. Today we're going to be discussing uh, the myths or limiting beliefs that mo a lot of people hold around money, and we're just going to debunk them. We did we did the whole Google thing. The ten most limiting beliefs about money, and they say how to remove them, but we're not going to go through that. All right. So the number one. What do you think the number one limiting belief around money is or myth around money i'm gonna say probably uh money is evil that that is correct is it actually yeah money is the root of all evil okay all right well what's your opinion on that uh, um okay well it's definitely wrong it's definitely a myth in my opinion um i think money can be used for a lot of good things well i, I mean money is just a tool right yep. so that's like saying a hammer is evil because, yeah. you know, somebody has taken a hammer one time and bashed somebody's head in with it, right? Yeah, that's a good point. Yet, a hammer is just a tool. Like, people put drywall up with hammers all the time. Yeah. Like, people are at my house right now hammering away on the trim and whatever else they're hammering. Yep. It's just a tool. Money can be used to add value to people through services, like you said, and... A tool can be used for good or for evil. For sure. I mean, it's needed for basic necessities, right? Housing and food and all this stuff. So clothing. I said it doing the whole barter system. You know, this is a, obviously a means of exchange as well, right? Yeah, 100%. What do you think number two is? I'm going to say you shouldn't talk about money. They, they say it's money is not that important. It's only money. <sighs> Apparently, this limiting belief about money expresses that you don't take money seriously enough. It's not one of your priorities. It's exact reason why you haven't achieved a satisfying situation with money, your money yet. When you don't take it serious enough. I agree with that. What you focus on grows, right? So if you don't take money serious and you don't focus on it, then you probably aren't going to be, you aren't going to have much money. And Okay, so how, how, how do you fix that limiting belief? I mean, it's it really, it doesn't give much of an example. It says treat money with respect and give it time it deserves. Then it will respect you. Does your money respect you in the morning? I think that's what it says. <laughs> Mine does. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know. I don't really know what to say about that one. It's uh, I, yeah. It's kind of it's kind of a yeah. Money is important. Just, well, I, it goes back to our first example of that money's not evil and it can be used for good things. So a kind of a scarcity mindset as well, right? Where people are, it, it's something hard. Right? Like this is a hard thing to like money's a hard thing to attain. L let's just keep. Okay. Number three, uh, money is there to spend. I mean, it depends on how you're defining, defining spending it. Money is meant to be used for sure. It's not meant to be hoarded. Uh, like you said, it's a tool. So money sitting stagnant doing nothing is, you know, it doesn't do you any good. It doesn't do anybody good. And it's meant to be, yeah. Right. And if you go back to the last video I just did with the five steps to creating wealth, you do you should spend less than you earn. For sure. Right? Yep. And then by doing that, you can take those those dollars that you haven't spent and, and invest them, right? Because there's no way that you're ever gonna become financially free if you don't invest. Hundred percent. It it goes back to just your financial IQ and what are you spending the money on? Of course, it, it starts with the basics of, like you said, not spending more than you make. Yeah. So you have a surplus and then adding value to other people and, and businesses with this with the surplus of the money, right? Even a bad investment is better than any spend. Agreed. Yeah. Any purchases. Yeah. Like you learn something from it. Yeah. I mean, even if you buy, like say you're buying an index fund at the top of the market right now. Yeah. You're still way better off doing that than spending it on something that loses its value overnight. The rich get rich and the poor get poorer. That's a myth that we're supposed to debunk? Yeah. I kind of agree with that, don't? Well, I, I, I might just rephrase it yeah. and say the people who understand money get richer. Yes. And... You know, it, it becomes down to the simple fact that I go out and make investments. Yep. Those investments pay me money. If I'm not spending all of that money that is paid to me on a yearly basis, a monthly basis, yep. and then I have more to invest, then yes, I'm going to get richer. It doesn't say for certain that the poor are going to get poorer. 
right? Because they have the equal opportunity to do the exact same thing. Yes. And totally agree. Like if you're going from 10 million to 20 million net worth, it's way easier to go from negative 5,000 to positive 5,000 net worth. Yes. It comes down to your, your wealth, your skill of, um, of growing wealth basically. Right. Yeah. If well, you have the skill to grow, then you will get richer. If you don't, then you well, it's, I don't even say it's the skill. I think it's the, the skill of not spending more than you make. Yeah. Okay. Number five, I am just not good with money. That is definitely a limiting belief. I was kind of like that too. Growing up, I came from a family that was, you know, always basically wasn't good with money. They said they weren't good with money. And so they weren't. And then, so it took a lot of education through self-help books and the changing my own mindset and also just learning about how money works in general, how to invest money and create value is I had to change that myself. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, like there's so many books out there that you can get on understanding money, right? And understanding, you know, what to do with money and how to work it. And I, all these, like you don't got to go buy these books. Like they're all available at the public library. Yep. Right. 100%. It's just taking the time and effort to be able to go to actually go learn this stuff. And you know, it's making the decision. Yeah, you have to invest in yourself first to yeah. be able to learn how to invest yeah. your money. Well, exactly. it, 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 the number one thing is making the decision to be good with money. Yes. So if you're not good with money, you are making that decision. Yes. Nobody's making that for you. You're making that for yourself first. Yes. All right, number six, my family has never been rich. <laughs> my family's never been rich. But, the, yeah. That well, now they are. That that shouldn't hold you back from from progressing. Well, I, it, it's so funny. Like my grandfather was wealthy. I mean, he owned his own business. Mm -hmm. You know, he had cottage, drove a nice car. They had money in the bank, right? Like they weren't wanting for anything. And then my parents, neither of them made over like forty thousand dollars per year. Yep. Now they did happen to own a house in Toronto, which you know they sold recently. They made a lot of money on it. So that was their number one, that was their best investment of their lifetime. You know, they're still, and, and you know what? I obviously have a higher net worth than my parents and probably more than my grandfather at, at any one time. The sins of the parents aren't born on the children, right? No, not necessarily. I mean, bad, bad habits can rub off onto you, but that, that shouldn't stop you from... Like you said, it comes back to learning yourself and investing in yourself. It's making the choice to learn, right? Yes. A lot of these is just you're choosing what what you want to cut your outcome. For sure. I mean, at the end of the day, too, like you are you, that old saying, you are who you hang around, right? Yeah. So if you if you're brought up with a bad surrounding financially, the chances are, of course, that you probably will have you'll pick up on some of those bad habits. But it's so funny. So Ian Zabo, um, this guy that he used to work with. And I went to school with his cousin. Okay. And like it was just a, it was a downtown Toronto school at the time. Like it, it wasn't a very, it wasn't like it was, is now, which is, it's like kind of Leslieville. It's like, you know, every, like our little community was pretty good, but you go a couple blocks over, it was all crack houses, right? Yep. So like it was a, it was a, it was a rougher area. <clears throat> and, you know, they, they used he always said to me, he's like, I don't understand. Like you're up here and then the rest of these people. And I said, I just made a decision to learn about how money works. Yeah. I, I think the end, you know, I made it a goal to be able to grow that for myself because I wanted to live differently. For sure. That, that, I wanted that, to have options. Yeah. That's the same thing with me as well. Yeah. I, 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 my parents were the same as yours and I made the, op, or I made the decision to, to learn. And uh, Number seven, money is a limited resource. Yeah. That's definitely a scarcity mindset. Like going back to what you said, I don't really know how you, how do you transition into having an abundance mindset? I think it, yeah, it comes with maybe having a small win and then kind of growing from there personally. But, um, it's definitely not a limited resource. There is a crazy amount of money out there. And it's so cheap to borrow money. So right? cheap to borrow money. And, yeah. and, well, I mean, if you if you think money is a limited resource, just Google M2 money supply. Yeah. And you'll see like it's like tripled over the last two, three years right now, right? 
yeah. it is starting to fade a bit. But anyways, we're not going to talk about that. I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously it's a scarcity mindset, right? So how do you be, how do you get an abundant mindset? I think one is trying to hang around people that are doing things bigger than maybe what you're doing. And then that will broaden your horizons a little bit and, and show you that there's a lot more money out there, bigger opportunities out there for you. Well, it's so funny. Like we, that comes back to like when I had our plot and on, right? Like, and he was talking about like, I mean, we did a thing with him when he was a brand new investor, didn't own anything, was working an engineering job. Yep. And now he's done, you know, he owns two burr properties that 100% burrs. Yep. He owns a construction company. He's done a couple flips. And I'm like, well, what did you do? He's like, I just did everything you told me to do. Yeah. He's like, I started educating myself. I, I started going and hanging out at like the all the, um, they're all on Zoom, right? All the um, different local networking groups. So they're all free. They're all on Zoom. Yep. It's like I met some people, you know. It, it, so people change his mindset basically or, you know, his, his beliefs around what's available to him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So get around people that uh, are doing things bigger and better than you are. Take action. Take action. Yeah. All right, here's the thing. You have to work too hard to get wealthy. That one's definitely wrong. Personally, like the the older I get and the more I start hanging around with people that are doing things bigger than I am, I start to realize I'm realizing that it's actually less is more. I'm like people that are doing less than what I am, working less than I am, are actually making way more money than I am, which is like a crazy thing to say. But it's because there's a, a financial part, or a, a, sorry, a uh, say it's just an education thing, really. It's people that are, they're making their money work for them instead of, you know, working by the sweat of their brow. There's like a Warren Buffett quote that basically says like, don't work from the sweat of your brow. So don't work like hard labor. You, you can have money work for you. And that's why he's the most successful investor, right? Because he leverages money and, and other people and businesses and he makes a lot of money. Not the most successful investor, but sorry, not yet. O- over the longest period of time, yes. he's been the steadiest investor. But does that make sense what I said? It's again, have to work. I mean, you might have to work hard at the beginning to For learn sure. it, yep. like I did. I mean, to learn everything, I I just couldn't read a book and, and learn it, right? I, I'm I'm a kin- whatever kinesthetic learner. I yep. got, really got to get in there and I got to learn it and I got to make mistakes. And people can tell me, hey, you know, don't do it this way. And I go, oh, I'm going to go do it that way. I'm like, oh, that's what they were talking about. Sometimes I make those mistakes two or three times. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. I'm not very bright. So that, that's yeah. another one. I don't have to be very smart. So look at me. But like, you know, we both hang out with, exactly, we both hang out with some really successful people. And yeah. like, you can see that it's all, it really is all about leverage. I think that's the biggest word there. Yeah. 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 Read, read who, not how. From, yeah. Uh, yeah. For sure. Or just in business in general, right? When you own a business you're leveraging the time of other people and the labor of other people and leveraging money so i think that's the biggest the biggest key there all right number nine either you're rich or you're happy either rich or healthy i don't know whatever i mean if you want to golf seven days a week uh, you know you don't need to be rich to be happy no but money solves a lot of problems well here, here's what money does money buys time yes right and Time gives you the freedom to do what you want with that time. Yeah. Well, like if I didn't have money and I had to, you know, work 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 hours a week, I couldn't play as much golf as I did. I couldn't uh, train for Ironman the way I did, right? I have a very good friend of mine that um, he's got a bunch of money. Like his house is paid off. He makes a a decent income. But the thing is that he's got, he doesn't have any time. Like he works like a dog, right? And he always complains to me and says, you know, I wish I had the freedom that you had because I'm golfing all the time with you and we're going out for lunches and dinners and, and having a good time enjoying the summer. And uh, really money isn't everything, but like you said, it comes back to having time. Again, that that's he's not he's not letting that money work for him. Exactly. Yeah, he's trying to. We're, we're getting him put in the right direction. But what do you think the number 10 is? I don't know. These are These are really surprising me, actually, some of these. It's selfish to want a lot of money. That one's definitely wrong too. I think it depends on what your plan is to do with the money, right? If it's just gonna, if it's just to spend on consumer things and and not provide any any good or value to the world, then yeah, probably. It's, I mean, that provides value, provides jobs for someone. That's true. Yeah, if you're just buying, yeah, that is true. It's I, not selfish. I but. mean, at the end of the day, people with a lot of money create usually create a lot of jobs, right? Yeah, that's what like I like. Mean. There's entrepreneurs out there. Like, I mean, you look at Elon Musk. Yep. Right or even Bezos, right? Like the two richest guys in the world. 
Elon's really actually changing the world. Like EVs weren't even a, a, a thing talked about, what, five, 10 years ago. Yep. And now everyone's like, you know, the, all the OEM automakers are making EVs. You know, he just sent people to space. Yep. He's sparking a lot of change for sure. Right. right? So who knows? And like that's the, the Starlink he has going. Like he has so many things. And like Bezos employs, I don't know, a million people. Yeah. yeah. Like, like the, these are huge things, right? Like yep. Elon started with some money from PayPal, but not when he started those other corporations, those other things, right? And that's what it does, right? Like it allows me to invest in, you know, my restaurants, which then employ people, right? Absolutely. And it gives opportunity. And, you know, now we're we're a renter here where, you know, it might be different, right? Yeah. Like it's- it Provides it, happiness and enjoyment to people that come and eat at the restaurants. And yeah, it's it goes all the way down the chain for sure, yeah. So it just comes back to what you're spending the money on, I guess. And the one thing I'm actually surprised isn't on this list. What's the one thing you think I'm surprised that isn't on this list? Because we've gone through the ten. I don't know. I was going to say the money's hard to get, but I think we already went over that. What is it? It takes money to make oh, money. Oh yeah, for sure. I should have known that one. Yeah. Jeez, Josh. What's sorry, it? sorry. We're we're gonna get. Let's cut this. We'll just get somebody <laughs> else on. It does not take money to make money. Well, it takes knowledge to make money, though, right? Mm-hmm. So if you don't have money, yep. I mean, I would tell you number one is like, again, we're going back to the five steps of wealth. So go watch that video. I just watched it last night, actually. Good. Yeah. I appreciate that. But like, it's li like spend less than you earn. Yep. Number one. And number two is go get knowledge, right? Yes. Like go get knowledge. Um, if you become, if you become great at finding properties under market value, You'll have so many people out there giving you money. A hundred percent. Well, just like you don't buy real estate with your own money. Yeah. Right. So you, now you make a bunch of money without using your own money yeah. because you yeah, are able to find opportunities and make them happen for people yeah. that can't do it. And we talk about real estate a lot because, you know, that's what we've done a lot in yet. I mean, you did the Amazon fulfillment business, right? Yep. You didn't use a lot of money in that, right? No. Like you found out what was you know, the, the spread between the two, you had your budget, you went and you did it yep. and you made money. Same, like you can, you can go out and read everything about, you know, actually uh, finding like stocks, right? Like, absolutely. And figuring out the value and your, the value to you and that type of thing. And you can, there's some very smart people out there that are, you know, share everything that like, you can learn all this type of stuff. Yeah, that is a good point. You don't need a lot of money, definitely, to make to make a lot of money. Like going back to your example with my Amazon business, like I started with basically buying used books for twenty five cents. Everybody out there's got twenty five cents, and I'd buy a used book for twenty five cents, and I'd sell it online for ten dollars, fifteen dollars. That allowed me to take that ten fifteen and grow it into bigger things, right? So, really, just comes down to your education and taking action and getting out there and doing it. Final word, what's your one piece of advice for all the YouTube people who are going to watch this? The 20,000 people are going to watch this video. <laughs> and the 20,000 are going to give a, a like and subscribe to the channel, right? That's right. I always forget that now. Final word of advice would be ultimately invest in yourself. Um, take the time to you know read books and surround yourself with people that are doing things bigger and better than you that can change your mindset from where you're at to the next level. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks so much, Josh. We appreciate having you on, and uh, maybe we'll have some more uh, some more uh, time with Josh and Mark. If you if you want that, comment down below. Yeah.